Jesus. We, we just had a speaker share about having abortions and how the Lord brought her through that forgiveness process and, and is now mobilizing her to help many other women. And so many women came forward that never told anybody in their life, yeah. my wife included. For years, she just felt she couldn't say anything. It just was too personal, too deep. And when she finally opened up, it almost gave her a new burden, you know, to help women in that regard and to especially minister to young women not to make, make that same mistake because now yeah. she can speak what it's done in her life. Yeah, she's a great example to other women. There was a woman in the church who was sexually immoral with her boyfriend. She got pregnant and she told someone she was going to have an abortion and that someone said, you know, the church has a pro-life ministry. You should reach out to them. She took one of the cards, she reached out, and now she's having that baby and giving that baby up for adoption. That's mm -hmm. the choice that she made. That can happen all over this country, and that's what we want Voiceless to do. We want Voiceless to inspire Christians to go to their churches and raise their hand and say, so, so I want to be involved wait in pro life ministry. You're, you're giving women choices. Uh, yeah. Maybe we're the pro choice. Well, you know, that's, I have to tell you, you nail it there because, you know, people say they're pro choice, but they're really pro abortion. They don't want anyone to have a choice. What's wrong with, with someone going to an abortion clinic and talking to a woman that's going in and giving them a choice? Say, you have a choice. You don't have to get an abortion. 84% of women get abortions because they believe they have no choice. Wow. Abortion, uh, the pro-choice the pro uh, message, you know, they, they try to say that it's about giving uh, a woman a choice, but it's not. It's about a woman believing she has no choice. 84% of them believe they have no choice. If the church were just there, present, visible, letting them know they have a pro-life presence, 84% of women would not choose abortion for that one reason alone. And I would say to many of the women that have had abortions in our churches, you know, you, you were deceived by the whole media, by the lies, and many of them I've talked to really didn't know much about what was going on. But now that we know much more about what's going on in the womb, that life, that individual life, Women that have been reconciled with that in the past now are having to rethink, I really took the life of my child. I, and they begin to really think of it through, but then it becomes a burden on them. And there's where we can make such a difference, you know. If we acknowledge it's sin, at the same time sin happens, we can forgive. God can forgive. And He can start a whole new fresh work in their lives. And I, uh, I just think of the impact of that dirty sin that Judah who advised his brother Joseph to be sold. And when it all happened, he couldn't even stick around and look at his father in the eye. Moved out of town, married a Canaanite woman, now living totally like the world. And yet God had called him to be the leader of the nation. And God had to use, you know, Joseph in a way uh, to help expose that sin for what it is, come to grips with it. And once that happened, it's like now the nation was ready to be born and be useful for God. And I, I really believe that this could very well be like the Jesus movement of the 60s was revolved around just all the guilt and shame of the free sex, free love generation that didn't pan out like they thought. I think this could be the next wave of revival.